In the previous tutorial we discussed the uh, ref and out data types for arguments and parameters to functions. And basically that involves passing an address rather than a value. You pass an ad address of some kind of data instead of the value of that data. And passing the address allows you to manipulate it. Uh, in this we're going to look at an actual practical application of uh, using the ref data type to do a sort, specifically a bubble sort. And in order to do this we're going to need three buttons at, to implement three phases. And all the controls we need for this are three buttons and two labels. And in phase one we're going to generate a random array of ints. And then in phase two we're going to uh, sort that array using a bubble sort. And in both cases we're going to display the result. And then in phase three we're going to clear the displays, which is the two labels, in order to start the whole process over again. Well here's the form with uh, uh, the two labels and the three buttons. And why don't we give this form a more meaningful title of bubble sort. So I change that in the title. And this is a case where we need to know the name of everything. So we need to know the name of this label. And if we go over to the properties, it's LBL random. And the name of this label, which is LBL sorted. And you can change these names, of course, in the uh, properties pane under the name. And then the name of this button is uh, BTN create random. The name of this button is BTN sort. And the name of this button is BTN clear. And if we compile and run this, first of all save it under bubble sort. And then run it. You'll notice it displays all three buttons all the time. And the trouble with that is what we really want to do is sort of hold the user by the hand and say, you have to press this button first, then you have to press this button, and then you have to press this button. And we could do this with the enable uh, property of the buttons, which would gray out the ones you can't press. But I think it's even more dramatic to use it with the visible property so that you'll only see the button that you are able to press. And this means <coughs> only to have an initial state where only one button is showing, specifically the create random button. And when you need a form to come up in an initial state, you can put it in the properties, but I think the best place to put it is in the form load. You know, you could put it in the properties for the form. And here we use the visible property for each of the three buttons. The create random button is set as true. The visible is set as true. The sort button visible is set as false. And the clear button uh, property of visible is set as false. And so if we save this and run it, you see the only button we see is the random button. But that's not use that useful because we push it and nothing happens. So what we want to do is go back and create event handlers for each of these three buttons. So double click on the button since a click event is the default event for buttons. We'll just double click on this and we'll that'll create the button create random click event. And I've already got those three statements in the clipboard, so if I do right click and paste. But once we click this button, what we want to happen is the button to become false. Because once you've clicked it, you don't want to be able to click it again. And what we want to become visible is the next button that the user can select, which is the sort button. So we'll make that uh, true. And then the clear button, as before, is false, so we don't see that. So if we uh, save this and run it, 
we click on the random button we see the bubble short becomes visible now we need to add code for the next two buttons that do exactly the same thing for the sort button we want to make itself invisible and just make the clear button true since that's the only option the user has and then for the clear button we want to go back to the beginning and just make the uh, create random visible and the other two invisible so if we compile this we'll save it first and then compile and run it see if we click random bubble sorts visible if we click bubble sort clear is visible and if we click clear uh, random becomes visible again so this is great at directing the user as to what he can do to initiate the next phase uh, the only next phase that's appropriate but of course we actually need the code to do something now well, in order to do this we need to create one global data item which is a array of integers that's named numbers and right now I have this uh, created as a new blank array with 10 uh, items but the way I'm writing the code you can actually change this 10 to any number you want and the code will automatically adjust so if we look at the random numbers click what we want to do is create a variable of type random which allows you to generate sequences of random numbers and just set that to new random uh, instantiate it in the standard way of converting a class to an object and then you need a for loop that goes through from zero to less than the numbers length the length of the numbers array so the numbers array is 10 so this is going to go from zero to nine since it's saying less than not less than and equal to and then we assign a random number value to each uh, item of the numbers array with the by taking the random object and the next method and specifying one as the lowest possible value and actually 99 is the highest possible value since this is an exclusive uh, range it doesn't include 100 it just includes one less than 100 and then in order to display this results we take uh, uh, we create a string called str random and put in it random array colon which is the same thing that was already in that label and then we go through on all the numbers except for the last one and we take that uh, array value converted to string and concatenate it with our random array and then concatenate a comma and then a space and the comma and the space is actually why we want to go to numbers length minus one or less than numbers length one, minus one so instead of going to nine we're going to eight because the very last one which is numbers length minus one which would be nine is uh, going to be set to just the number without the comma and the space so we won't have a comma stuck at the end and then once we've created this concatenated string we assign it to that label so let's compile this or save it and then compile it and run it and see what happens you see we get a list of 10 random numbers uh, that are in totally random order which is sort of the point now if we click bubble sort it doesn't do anything but change the thing because we still haven't put any code in bubble sort. Well, if we put the code in the uh, sort button we get to the real uh, guts of the program which is a bubble sort and basically that has a bool called in order which we initially set to false and then we have a while loop that says while this array isn't in order keep looping and then the first thing we do inside the loop as we make another assumption we make an assumption that the array is in order and in order to have that assumption proved wrong we have a for loop that goes through each member of the array and it goes through it in pairs so once again we're looking at the number uh, 
the length of the array minus 1 because if the largest number is 9 the largest number we want to go up to with is 8 because what we're doing is first looking at 0 and 1 1 and 2 2 and 3 and so on in pairs and these pairs are called with a function that right now is just a black box called swap and swap returns a bool that says that's true if it did a swap and false if it didn't do a swap. So basically this if statement is saying if at any time you swap pairs set the in order to false because we're going to have to go through again. This this will return true every time if it's entirely in order. And if it's not entirely in order it'll set in order to false and we'll loop through again. Now if we look at the swap routine here's where we're using the ref. We use ref, the ref both in the call and in the parameters for this statement. And this says we're getting an address rather than a, a value. And that's important because we want to change these values. We want to swap the two pairs if they're not in order. And we can only do that if we have their address. We can't do that if they, we just have their value. So initially we say if top is less than or equal to bottom so if we have zero, the address of zero and the address of one, we're saying if zero item is less than or equal to the one item, just return false. We don't need to swap them because they're already in order. But if they're not already in order, we need to have a temporary variable, which we defined here as int temp, and set that equal to the top, then set the top equal to the bottom, and then set the bottom equal to the temp. I'm sure if you'll think about it, you'll see why we need a temp. <laughs> or we'll just end up with two items that have the same value. So once we've gone through and done our bubble sort, which is basically this for loop inside this while loop, uh, we need to once again display the results in the sorted array string. So we have essentially identical code to what we had in the random numbers where we concatenate the string with all the numbers in the array which hopefully are now ordered numbers and set uh, the text property of label sorted array equal to that string. So if we compile and run this we press the create random and it shows our string of random numbers then we press the bubble sort and it shows the numbers now ordered from lowest to highest. So 66 gets replaced by 2, which bubbles up. You see it was switching pairs every time, and if it switches a pair, it does the whole process again. So the 2 originally was way over here, and it gradually bubbled up in the switched pairs, which ergo the name bubble sort. And now the only thing remaining we need to implement is the uh, clear button. So we just set these uh, two label text properties to their original values of random array and sorted array with no numbers after them in the code for the clear button. And we more or less have a completely working program. We save this and run it and then we generate a random series of numbers to the bubble sort to sort them into order and then do the clear to start the whole process over again and once again the only button we can press is generate random numbers so we can do that all again and basically uh, keep doing that all day long especially if we've had a lobotomy or something I'm sure there's some people out there that must be saying there must be an easier way of sorting an array than writing our own bubble sort routine. And yes there is actually. We could just comment all this out by doing uh, control E uh, C and then just put one statement up here which is array dot sort and then specify the numbers array as an argument. And if we compile and run this, we essentially get the same program, but with only one statement. 
So this is another case of, of education being totally non-relevant to the real world. <laughs> but hopefully you learn something that's valuable and, uh, and don't forget to subscribe.